education because there is an erosion in this process which cannot be helped because people are scrambling. Uh, right now I request you to uh, talk or elaborate on a very resonant epithet you once used about yourself. There is a fellowship with writers, whether it is in Kashmir, whether it is in Chhattisgarh, or whether it is in Bihar, or whatever. आज आम सहित अच्छा भारत जन विशिष्ट गाड़पिक औपन्यासिक स्तंभकार श्री पॉल जकारिया श्री पॉल जकारिया केरल जन विशिष्ट साहित्यिक कथा पत्रिका उन्मोचन अवसर रे से ओडा को आसी अवसर रे से आम सहित किसी समय बीतेबे एवं आम तक सहित आलोचना करवा मिस्टर जकारिया आई व्वेलकम यू टू ओडा दिस् इज रियली ग्रेट प्रिविलेज टू व्वेलकम ए रईटर अफ योर स्टेचर टू माइ स्टेट And I understand that this is your second visit to Orissa. That's right. So, would you like to tell us uh, how Orissa struck you when you first came here? When I first came here, and when I when now that I am here again, I found it uh, the place very beautiful. It's a it's it's a very rural place. I mean, the, uh, of course, I've been to the cities too, but I think Orissa is still not still as it should be a very very rural place, full of a very quiet beauty. Paddy fields and the coconuts and uh, groves and mango trees and uh, and the roads, especially from you know connecting the cities, they go through some really beautiful countryside. So I think the countryside is the strength of uh, Orissa, and I really enjoyed uh, driving through uh, these places. Plus the beach in uh, the Puri in Puri also. Uh, no particular incident I would like to recall, uh, but uh, I found the people. You know the people of Orissa, because you don't really. We are all strangers to each other, you know. So suddenly, when you discover, you only read about Orissa in the newspaper, and uh, yeah. suddenly when you come into Orissa and meet people, you are surprised and so happy that uh, to meet uh, such nice people. Sir, yeah. How much is how much people in Kerala know about Orissa? Uh, I think the people in Kerala know. Uh, except what they read in the newspapers <laughs> and except what the channels provide them in occasional shots and that too when something goes wrong here you see uh, otherwise uh, there is very little uh, awareness of uh, orissa in kerala i think there has been uh, some translations there have been some translations uh, from Ori oriya literature but not to the extent that they have uh, you know really you know made an impact uh, in the malayali uh, mind But we all know about uh, Biju Patnaik mm -hmm. and the senior leaders uh, mm -hmm. like uh, the Orissa mm -hmm. leaders, you know, because they have been the top of uh, yeah. the political uh, political picture. But about literature, uh, people in Kerala know very little, very little, very little. Yeah, very little because yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that a little yeah, later. Yeah. But uh, right now, I will request you to uh, talk or elaborate on mm. a very resonant epithet you once used about yourself. Yeah. Uh, that you described yourself as a radical human being, yeah. and I found that extremely fascinating, and it resonates in the mind. So, would you like to elaborate on that for the benefit of our uh, audience? You know, to uh, actually, uh, one shouldn't describe oneself as a radical human being because that would be claiming too much. But I think I was using some other words, but I think the totality of it, maybe it must have come to that. All that I meant was that. Uh, uh, As a writer, even I think any individual, not only a writer, should be uh, alert to what is going on uh, around him in the society, especially politics, the forces that that sort of encircle him. I personally see these forces as, as three: one is religion, one is politics, one is media, and then there is caste and other things which. Also, certainly have an impact on you. So, I think a radical human being must learn to be free of the pressures of these four, three or four forces, which can imprison you, imprison your mind, make you or thinking narrow your thinking into certain tunnels, and you develop a tunnel vision. 
right. which because you have been influenced so you know if you're so religious that you cannot see anything else then everything that you see is seen in the color of those faiths and yeah. beliefs I and think you way. made that very memorable statement that uh, if I say something about God's God's uh, don't mind or God's uh, yes. mind. So that was God's, a very I am sure if God's word. are as good as yeah. what they are, they wouldn't mind. Yes. Yes. Um, we in Orissa, uh, particularly writers, mm -hmm. scholars and academics, uh, admire and envy uh, writers in Kerala because we think that they have a very large readership which sustains them. Yeah. But it seems you have a, a slightly different uh, take on the subject. Yeah. You think that uh, writers in Kerala are also an endangered species that their readership base is also getting eroded by certain forces. Yeah. So this is news to us because we have been <coughs> programmed to admire, admire and envy yeah. uh, the Kerala Malayali writers because they have such a huge readership at their disposal and we think that our readership is dwindling. Yeah. So uh, would you please uh, See, enlighten us on that? In comparative terms, I think we still enjoy uh, a good readership compared to, but maybe even compared to Hindi, I think, but Bengali must be doing better, I do not know. What we have, we do really have a uh, good readership because um, individual book buyers apart, there is a network of <coughs> public libraries, village libraries and town, you know, there are what you call rural, it's a it's a network that connects the entire... It's around 8,000 public libraries. Something like 8,000 public that. libraries. Many, many of them, of course, have slowly become uh, dead. You see, 60s, 70s, and 80s were the heydays of these libraries. But these days, what has happened is uh, political pressures are mounting on these libraries, and political parties are trying to take them over, with the result that uh, these libraries, so one faction moves away from, they stop coming to the library, borrowing books, reading newspapers, etc. So there is a problem there also. But in general, uh, you see, Malayalis, Malayalam continues to be the spoken language like in, in Orissa. It is the single most important language that is operative within the state. And therefore, and their readers have been always a minority. We are, there are 3.25 crore Malayalis right now living in Kerala. Out of that, luckily, I think something like a couple of lakh people are interested in reading. Out of that, I would say some, maybe a 10,000 families are interested in buying books. And that alone sustains, sustains the, the writers uh, uh, and the, the right, publishing, yeah, industry, the publishing yeah. industry. Because if a publisher comes out with a book of 2,000 copies, he is able to get rid of them, say, in about between 10 and 14 months. And he's well, happy. That, that's, ah, that's and really he's happy. Encouraging. Uh, encouraging. And otherwise, but if it's a bestseller, if it's a book that immediately catches attention of people, I, you find that you have about uh, three or four editions in a year. The, you see, Malayalam continues to be the second language in, uh, in the educational system. And low, uh, you know, every year, lakhs of young people are coming out of the schools and colleges, extremely well trained in English, so to say. Though I, am, I can't say that because their spoken English is pretty bad when they come out, but their grammar knowledge is pretty good. Well trained in English, but very poor in Malayalam. And Malayalam has taken, it is not only, a, it is not just a second language, it is taking, being pushed back at every stage. As I said yesterday, it is being pushed back for an economic reason because Malayalam doesn't make, give you a future in the world outside. The economic In the world economic outside. world outside. So more and more families are somehow paying whatever kind of money, more and more families are putting their children into the English medium uh, schools. And they come out with, <coughs> neither are there good readers in English, nor More are there good readers in Malayalam. So in a matter of another 10 years, I don't know what would be the situation because there is an erosion in this process which cannot be helped because people are scrambling for livelihoods. Yes. This and you, you hold the view that uh, literature alone cannot literature alone sustain cannot. a language. A language. That's I am, language yeah. live At least five. the case history of Malayalam proves yeah. that there are lots of enthusiasts for Malayalam. It is still, still a good reading world, but that still doesn't give it credibility because it cannot give people an economic life. Yeah. It has no 
പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ അണ്ടർപിന്നിങ് നോ ഇക്കണോമിക് അണ്ടർപിന്നിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് യൂസ് പൊളിറ്റീഷ്യൻസ് യൂസ് ഇറ്റ് ആസ് എ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ടു ക്യാച്ച് വോട്ട്സ് ദെൻ ദ ലീവ് ഇറ്റ് അലോൺ സോ ദിസ് ഷുഡ് ഗിവ് എസ് പോസ് ദിസ് ഷുഡ് മേക്ക് എസ് തിങ്ക് ഐ സീരിയസ്ലി അബൌട്ട് ഐ തിങ്ക് എവറി ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഷുഡ് മലയാളം ഇസ് ഇൻ സച്ച് എ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് വി ഷുഡ് വറി മോർ അബൌട്ട് आवर ലാംഗ്വേജസ് വി സീ മോർ 